So I changed the title because I think it's fitting more about what I will speak today. And uh, I hope that you will enjoy my French accent all along this uh, presentation. So I will first present what is 12 formation and then I will uh, explain, um, I will present some experimental uh, uh, results and show you what I mean by uh, marginality. So 12 formation occurs when uh, you have an unexplored area and you have a first individual going through and leaving some attractive trail behind, uh, behind it. And then when the second um, individual comes, it has a higher chance to, go, to follow the same trails and leaving his own uh, attractive trails and so on and so on, and you have path formation. The master in uh, path formation are ends. They are using uh, pheromones, which is uh, attractive substances, attractive for the nest mates, and they use it to deploy, um, oh, there is one, anyway. Uh, it's, they use it to deploy um, transport network and around their nests, which, is, uh, which help them to efficiently explore the, the, their environment and to optimally exploit it. For instance, here they are finding the shortest path between f the nest entry and the food source. To understand well this phenomenon, we need to really understand what are the individual rules here. And uh, uh, there are a lot of studies carrying on here, but um, there are two problems in that uh, phenomenon to, to, which make it hard to study. The, fer the first one is that pheromones are really hard to detect, especially if you have a large group and the, in a large arena. And what we usually do is that we use uh, the previous passages as a proxy to estimate uh, the pheromone concentration. The second problem is that when you study such animals uh, in large groups, uh, you have tracking issue, you leave the identity, you lose the identity of your animals, and also you have a high frequency of direct interaction. So when you observe a behavior, you don't know if uh, it gets influenced by uh, direct contact information or by uh, pheromones. Oops. Thank you. So to um, overcome these two problems, I have done several experiments based on single end. So you have only one end in the experiment. And I focus on, today I will speak mostly about char characterization of the trajectory of an isolated end. And also I will answer to a very simple question but uh, who ha which has been never addressed is, is a single end influenced by its own pheromones? So here is my experimental setup. Uh, you take an end, you put it in uh, 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 Argentine end, you put it in a triangle shape um, uh, maze, and you just uh, record uh, its trajectory for two hours without food. Uh, this experiment is easy to replicate and to track, so I have uh, about 500 of precisely tracked trajectory. So it's a behavior of an uh, isolated ant, like I said, and what is interesting is that the trajectory is confined. So the ant uh, is um, visiting repeatedly the same areas and also is facing frequently binary choice when it is um, leaving the chamber. So all of that uh, will help to um, uh, address the question I have asked previously. And so I will present two experimental uh, results and these results uh, provide marginality. The first one is on the end activity. Uh, so the hand has an active period when it's uh, working and an active period when it's stopping. 
just to let you know, I have found that while walking, the ant have a constant probability to stop, so nothing new. What is interesting is the stopping time distribution. It's a power law of parameter one. So just for the intuition, uh, power law means that uh, the, m the more the ant stops, the less likely it will walk again. So there is a self-amplification amplification in the stop process. There are a lot of really interesting features in power law in the, for the end, but today I will stress on the marginality of the value one. Because if uh, the stopping time were following a, 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 a power law of parameter greater than one, uh, the stopping time will have a finite mean. So it means that you can predict in average how long the end will stop. And uh, if you had a look to the evolution of the proportion of active time of your end, it will stay constant. But if uh, the parameter is less than one, the um, stopping time will have a non-finite mean. So it's not really easy to um, get it intuitively. Uh, for the end, that means that uh, you cannot predict how long the end will stop. And um, you can observe very long, long, long stopping time. And also, if you had a look to the evolution of the proportion of active time, active time it will decrease over, over time. So activity will decrease. So that is my first uh, experimental uh, results. The second one is marginality again in the barring binary choice. Like I told you, when the ant is exiting the room, it's facing a uh, binary choice, right or left. And uh, we, have a look, we are, have a look to that to see if there is a reinforcement in the behavior of the end. And uh, so we will see if we can observe path selection. This means that after a while, the end, when uh, uh, it's exiting the, 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 the chamber, will only use uh, exiting by the same corridor or observe a uniform traffic. It will use both the same way, or do we have something in between? So before to, to show my experimental result, I will present you the model uh, I have chosen to, to model this, uh, these binary choices. So you consider that the ant is leaving a quantity B at its, at its choice in, uh, between the connection of the chamber and uh, the chosen um, uh, corridor. And then uh, the probability for the end to choose, uh, let's say, the right branch, the, the right corridor, will depend, of course, of a weight. And this weight uh, is expressed with uh, the ferment, total ferment quantity li left here. So it's uh, B times the number of passages. And also, uh, I add um, a coefficient alpha, which is there to model the end sensitivity to the ferment. So, the role of the parameter alpha b in uh, the model, so to, have, uh, to understand that, we just follow uh, the, the evolution of the proportion of passages of the end through the, the one of the branch, so here it's right, one of the corridor, here is uh, right, and uh, here are sketches of uh, this uh, distribution. Uh, the, two, the, two, the two parameters uh, can have two effects on uh, the model. The first one is path selection. When they are high, if you have a high quantity of ferment left or a high sensitivity, so you will observe path selection. Uh, they will contribute to a path selection, and the contrary, if they are low, you will observe a uniform traffic. But they don't uh, aff affect at the same time in the, uh, in the convergence of uh, the proportion. Uh, B will have a short-term Inference, it will influence only the first um, choices, but, uh, and which is totally opposite to alpha, which has an asymptotic effect. And alpha here will be the only one to decide wh uh, which behavior you, we will observe eventually. If alpha is greater than one, you, we, will, we will observe with probability one path selection, and if alpha is less than one, we will observe uniform traffic. So here it's important to retain that uh, uh, choosing the, uh, the value of alpha different than one, um, fix what you will observe uh, at the end, so it's deterministic. What is interesting here is uh, the marginality, so when alpha is equal to one, it's B equal to one. Here, alpha kind of disappears, and B is the only one to decide what will happen eventually. And it's no more uh, 
de deterministic. You will have a certain probability to observe path selection and, or, and a certain probability to observe uh, uniform traffic. And uh, tweaking the value of B will uh, change this probability. If B is uh, lesser than one, you will have a higher probability to observe uh, uniform traffic. And if B is bigger than one, you will observe the contrary. And when B is equal to one, the so marginal value, uh, you, will have the same you will have the same probability to observe path selection or uniform traffic. Okay, now let's go back to my experiments. <coughs> And of course, the question is, what, is, what are the good value alpha b to reproduce what we observe? And I claim that we should take alpha and b close to 1, 1. Why? I will present two um, arguments based on the, the data and some modeling. Uh, the first one is uh, that the binary choice uh, probability is following the variable's law. So I will not explain what is it here, because we already spent time yesterday about that. So what it means here is just that the, proportion, the probability to choose the right branch is depend linearly to the, the binary choice uh, probability. What is, so here, uh, it's not enough to decide that alpha and b is close to one because we could maybe find other parameter value who uh, provides such a linear uh, relation. So to explore the, the parameter uh, space, I had a look to the diffusion. So what I mean by diffusion, you take your, the, the triangle divided in six zones, and you don't take into consideration what is happening in each of the zones. Uh, you don't just consider that the end is jumping from uh, one zone to another one after some waiting time. And then you unfold this space so that if the ant is always jumping in the same direction, uh, you consider that it's converging to infinity. And whereas if it's jumping between two zones, you consider that it's, st it's staying uh, close to zero. So what, are the experimental, what is the experimental diffusion? Is uh, that, so here you have the distribution of uh, the, the ant on the unfold space for several uh, times. And here you have uh, the, the variance over time. So it's a diffusion because the variance depends linearly on the time, so that is not new. But what is really interesting is that if you put a, a log on the y-axis, you see that the distribution are exponential. So that means that the, the diffusion is not Gaussian. So that it's a clear evidence that we have a reinforcement because if we, uh, the process was memoryless, it would be a Gaussian, and it's not what you observe. We observe exponential diffusion. So now the question is which value of alpha b I have to choose to reproduce uh, this specific diffusion. Right? And um, so for that, I have done simulation by fixing different value of alpha and b. Uh, most of the time, for value of alpha b, I, obs I, I observe a diffusion. So, linear dep uh, the variance depends linearly over time. So, good. And here is um, a diagram of uh, b and alpha, and I uh, I plot here the result of uh, the simulation for a different value of alpha and b. Here you have alpha and b equal one. Here alpha and b less than one, and etc. So you can observe that we have uh, distribution, uh, diffusion which are not um, exponential, this one on here also, which is uh, Gaussian, but we also, also observe exponential uh, diffusion on that for several uh, value of alpha and b. So to efficiently explore the parameter space, what I have do is that I have sim for several value of uh, parameter value, I have um, simulate two hours of experiment, and then I have fit uh, the resulting distribution of the end with an exponential function, and I have reported the quality of this fit on this heat map. The darker it is, the better the fit is, and you can see that we have a whole region of uh, good parameter value, which reproduce an exponential uh, diffusion. What does that mean for the end? Uh, so this region rely when the parameter alpha and b have an antagonist effect. For instance, this extreme case is when uh, the sensitivity is high, alpha 
bigger than one, or and the quantity of pheromone is low, uh, B lesser than one. And the same here, in, uh, the contrary here in that region. So if you think about the end, it's a waste of energy to take alpha and B in that region. Uh, because uh, if, it means that if you have uh, pheromones, which uh, if you lay a lot of pheromones at each passage, this means that you have to uh, be really uh, lowly, uh, poorly sensitive to this pheromone. Uh, and the contrary, if you leave a very weak uh, quantity of pheromones, you have to ha be really sensitive to this pheromone. So that is not smart for the end. And uh, like. Uh, scale down the, the flexibility of uh, the behavior. And of course, the marginal value 1, 1 is inside this, um, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, region. And I think so, this marginal value, it's a suitable compromise uh, between the two effects. And so that, is, that are my arguments to take alpha and be uh, close to 1, 1. So to conclude, the, the answer is yes, ants, ants are uh, influenced by their own pheromone, but, but by a marginal uh, way. And uh, we have found marginality, like I told you, in the ant activity between path, and, uh, between path selection and uniform traffic. We have, uh, oh, there is a problem, anyway. And I have also found uh, some marginality between uh, constant, uh, constant activity and decreasing activity. And I didn't have time today to explain another mar uh, sign of marginality I have found in the stereomergic behavior uh, between the nonlinear reinforcement and no reinforcement at all. And uh, yeah, so thank you to have listening. And uh, I want to thank my PIs and collaborators who have uh, uh, help, uh, help me in the, this project, and notably uh, Guy Terolas and Yukshate. And also I want to thank, of, uh, thank Offer Feynman, uh, who um, uh, welcomed me in uh, his team uh, since one year, and I hope that the next time that we'll meet, I will present you uh, my work with Offer. Thank you. Thank you.